So thank you for this invitation. And I will, uh, I'm a professor at the University of South Florida, and I will present as president of the Global Virus Network. This is my disclosure slide. So clearly, when we speak of global health, we all know that uh, the threats of infectious disease is now very obvious. And in addition, uh, we know that respiratory viruses have a major impact on global health and uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, only reinforce this. But we also know that previous pandemics can really lead uh, to some resurgence uh, with long-term persistence of the viruses. And finally, we also know that 70% of emerging viral diseases are zoonoses. That means they spread from animals. So it's really about global and one health and how these viral infections impact on human health. Uh, I will show a very few slides because you are fully aware of this on the present situation on COVID-19, just to take lessons for the future. We know that we have a huge pandemic and this is underestimated. We also know that this has consequences with more than 5 million of deaths. And a key point for the future, and this is a key point for the impact on global health, is the existence of long-term sequelae, of long COVID, long-term medical consequence. We are just at the beginning of understanding the impact of such viruses on the, uh, especially on the brain, but also on a more general basis on human health. And this is a recent surge in Europe. And we have to uh, acknowledge that we do not really understand all the basis of this natural evolution of the virus. Clearly, viral variants, seasonal variations, but also the type and efficacy of containment precautions, the uh, efficacy of the vaccine, we will come to this, are important. What we have learned, unfortunately, is that the concept of herd immunity is not so clear. To which uh, point, uh, which point do we need to reach with the vaccines and with the natural infection to really get full protection and herd immunity? This is not clear. And also, we have witnessed the failure of the so-called zero COVID strategy. So when we think of the impact on global health and the future, we really have to analyze what went wrong. Many things went wrong. Lack of coordination, this is to the role of, of WHO. Healthcare system organization. Also the need, science-driven, medical-driven, public health-driven political decisions, and the problem of communication. And what I want to do is to touch on some of these topics. So first, when we think of a pandemic, it's really a real global impact. It's not about health. It's about economic, social impact, mental health, health system organization. And we can only understand the impact by a global approach, which means to prepare for scenario where we really embrace the different compounds of these difficulties. And this is about preparedness for the next epidemics, which is a very fashionable wording, difficult to really achieve and so important. So I just want to mention communication. Uh, who do you want to listen to? Governments, individual scientists, research or regulatory agencies, WHO, others. This is where we believe that networks of scientists, experts should be at stake. We need coordination. We need long-term reinforcement of healthcare system. We need expertise. We need to translate the technologic innovation to global health. We need reactivity and surveillance. And we need education and training. And this is where virology education is so important. It has been very striking for me, both as the president of Pasteur and of the French NIH, and now in the US, to see how much we need worldwide a next generation of virologists. 
So one point I want to emphasize is that if we want to lower the burden on global health, we really need to have a real impact on uh, diagnostic tests. So this is an example from a, a global virus network center in, uh, in Boston, uh, Dr. Sabeti from left to right, it's on the saliva, and then you have rapid molecular tests. And you can really, in the context of a pandemic, lower the burden by a rapid diagnosis while you are preparing for the vaccines and the new treatment. Um, another approach which is very important is obviously the global and one health approach. We know that it's about the interface between humans, animals, environments, that most, as I said, of emerging infectious diseases are zoonoses, and it has very practical consequence because we need to target the human-animal interface for surveillance instead of having a widespread surveillance. And we also need to take into account, I will briefly touch on this, nutrition, food safety, and security. So can we predict disease emergence? We believe at the GVN that you cannot predict only by genomics, that you need to focus on the interface between the animals and the humans, and the global data sharing mechanisms are key. And the guy said database is a very good example. And actually, this pandemic has allowed to implement a much better sharing of data. It's about connecting between different uh, aspects, I would say, of global health. This slide illustrates what we call syndemics. Syndemics means, and this is on the left part of the slide, lower part of the slide, syndemic is a deleterious interaction between different health conditions, which unfortunately synergize. And it's about how food insecurity and COVID-19 but also in general, viral pandemics interact negatively. And in this context, the microbiome, the gut and lung microbiome have emerged as very important component of this conversation because it is clear that they modulate the susceptibility to SARS-CoV-2, the severity of COVID-19, which in turn lead to the possibility of intervening on microbiota be by pre-probiotics or nutrient preparation. And interestingly, this also holds true for other viruses such as influenza, enteric viruses. So there is a kind of negative loop between food insecurity, nutrition, and microbiome, and where the microbiome acts as a moderator in the interaction between food and the body. And so this is something we are very interested in at USF with many partners from left to right is how you can intervene between the environment, healthy soil, healthy oceans and their microbiome, food production in the middle, healthy food, harvest and distribution, and on the right, food consumption, human health, viral pandemics. And this is a, a, a study ongoing uh, with the GVN and USF on biodiversity, ecosystem, and interplay between these different fields of research. I will skip these slides just to show that uh, you can modulate gut microbiota with nutrition. This is a collaboration with Dr. Li Ping Zhao at Rutgers University and Dr. Oxner at USF in patients with pre-diabetes of type 2 diabetes. So to move to uh, the uh, to the, to the future, I would say, we really need novel schemes for organization. Uh, not obviously you need national and international agency, this is of obvious foundations, but you need consortia, networks, flexibility. You need multi and transdisciplinary collaborations, easy to tell, fashionable wording, so important. And you need international collaboration. And this is really in the context that we are acting at the Global Virus Network, which has been created by Bob Gallo in 2011, combining research, education and training, and advocacy. And actually, this is in the context of education and training that we have enjoyed interacting with virology education. 
uh, as I said, founded in 2011, based in Baldibor and also now in Tampa. And now a worldwide network, 65 centers of excellence, 12 affiliated in 35 countries, regional organizations, the three missions I have mentioned, expertise, to provide expertise, to provide reactivity, to provide academic industrial partnerships. And I just want to show some examples with the biobank program, which is so important to analyze samples and uh, evaluate diagnostic tests and vaccines, international meetings to gather everybody, the GVN Academy program to really provide fellowship, but also nurturing career track, mentorship, training the emerging leaders in virology. And finally, uh, information. And this is a website of the GVN where we provide a daily updated information on variants and vaccines. So I will close with this brief, this brief presentation from this slide, which I always enjoy, which is really why we are all of us working as to how we can impact on these deadly uh, viral pandemics. Thank you so much.